everyone, this is Sharon Goulet from digitalnomadwannabe.com coming live from home in Melbourne and I do just want to start with a special hello to everyone I saw at last night's Travel Massive Meetup here in Melbourne. Well, today is my sixth case study update all about my newest site on Malaysia and today I'm going to talk about what I did from months 12 to about 15 and a half months which is from mid-October last year to right now. So that's right, after this update, we're going to be up to date and all my updates in future will be about what's happening in the present time. So that will be uh, easier <laughs> and more interesting, I think. Now at the start of this period, so where we left off the last update, my traffic was on a plateau with about 25,000 page views. Um, in September, I earned about $500. Now during months 12 to 15 and a half, I finally got off this plateau with the November Google update. So um, although I heard many people comment as though every travel site in the world had been hit by that update, I, I guess I was hit, but in a really positive way and I finally started getting traffic. Um, again, not that 25,000 page views wasn't traffic, but I was there for quite a while. So my traffic and earnings finally started increasing. I finished adding content from my October trip that I talked about in my last update. And I started planning two more trips to Malaysia for 2020. I booked into ITB Berlin, which takes place soon. And most importantly, I came up with clear goals across my whole business for 2020, which led to a new plan and new employees for this site. So they're the types of things I'm going to be talking about today. Now, as always, I'll go into details of what I did and learned so you can copy and have success too. And I really hope with this update, it'll really, not necessarily this update, sorry, with this case study, it'll really get you thinking a lot bigger because that's like my quote at the moment, you know, think bigger. Um, and I really want you to think beyond just the normal sort of blogging process. Um, so I really think this year is going to be super interesting in this case study. Now, if you've missed my previous updates, I'll link to them below when I finish and you should definitely go watch them. You know, everything I talk about in this update was obviously only possible because of the work I put in in those first 12 months. Um, but before I dive right into it, I do want to let you know that my premium course, Build Blog Freedom Fast Track, now includes a course on how to start a second site. So whether you should do it in the first place, how to find a niche and test it's right and will work. So everything I go through when I start a new blog, um, how to start the site, buy the domain, etc. You know, everything you need to know so then you can move into the fast track and learn SEO and affiliate marketing and get it earning money. And you can find that at digitalnomadwannabe.com slash BBF. But let's dive straight in. Ask questions at any time. I will do my best to answer them, um, either while I'm talking through everything or I'll answer them at the end. So what did I do at after month 12 when my last update finished? Well, at the end of my last update, I just got back from a research trip to Malaysia and I was pumping that content out. Now, I continue to work on that and I put a lot of effort into finding some writers I could use going forward. It took me about two weeks of actually most of my time to find some good writers. It wasn't like the easiest process in the world, um, but it is going okay still, thankfully. Um, they helped me finish the rest of the content I wanted for my trip, and they are doing most of my writing work now. Definitely a goal I have at the moment is to write a lot less. It's been good as it prompted me to start a process of me coming up with the main keyword. So I have like a content calendar, I come up with the main keyword. My VA writes an article plan and notes for the section that needs research. I go over that, make sure it aligns with my experiences, that the research is correct. Um, I write an intro, the writer writes the article, the VA puts it up, I proofread and hit publish. At least that was my process from October until a week ago. Uh, it worked really well. Uh, so well, in fact, I started dreaming of removing myself from it. So more about that soon. In October, I earned about $500 as well. You know, my traffic was similar to September. Just under half was a Zoic, a big chunk of the rest was Kluke, then Agoda and transport bookings. So from the end of October and all through November, my time was spent performing an annual update on all my content across all my sites. You know, it's a really big job, takes a lot of time, um, but very worthwhile, I find. Now, because my Malaysia site is new, um, not much needed to be updated on that site. I only updated about 10 articles that were written at the start of this year, that were, uh, sorry, start of 2019, that were already doing pretty well, and that felt long enough to be worth an update. But most of the content was written in the few months leading up to that, so it, you know, there was no point updating at that point. Um, but spending all this time doing the update on everything else meant that I didn't really work on the site during this time. 
But more exciting in November was that update at the beginning of the month, which pushed my site off its plateau and it started growing traffic and income again, which was awesome. Um, even though I had faith it would happen, uh, you know, it's always nice when it's not just faith that it's actually happening. So over this time, um, Azoic went up nicely as well, uh, not just with the more traffic, but with higher RPM. You know, it did take a while to settle in, like they say. I think they usually say a few months, but um, you can actually go read my Azoic review article on the homepage of Digital Nomad Wannabe at the moment. And, you know, it was more like over five months, it still kept going up. So that was really good. Uh, I also switched to their DNS in December and I got more help to optimize, just try and improve it even further. I also got tickets for ITV Berlin, uh, where I hope to talk with Malaysian tourism authorities and any other related businesses. Uh, in November, I earned 630 with Azoic, being over half, then Kluke, Agoda and Transport. Um, in December, you know, I worked about half of December before our big summer holidays started, meaning the kids were off. Um, it, where I was surprised is usually we would go away for the summer holidays, but this year we pretty much stuck around just about the whole thing. And I didn't realize there's no like holiday programs for most of the summer holidays or anything. So that really made it so I could do very little work in January in the second half of December. But actually even saying I worked the first half of December is feels like an exaggeration. Because for the first time ever for me, really, I just got so burnt out that I just didn't really do anything. Um, usually I can just work through when I feel that way. But this time, no, I just just couldn't be bothered, didn't feel like it. Um, I was really struggling with coming up with big plans for 2020 and knowing what I was trying to achieve. And it's like when I don't have that big picture view, I just stop being bothered doing the stuff day to day, right? It's like, well, what's the point if I don't even know what it's gonna lead to? That's how my brain works anyway. Usually when I feel like that, I go back to the drawing board, I make my goals, I make my strategy, and then I feel a lot better and I can move on. But I just couldn't even bring myself to make goals. I just was so lost. Um, thankfully though, that sort of pushed me to finding a great coach and I finally found one like I've been looking for for a while that's like really well qualified, has a PhD in working with entrepreneurs um, in psychology. So that was really good and I had a few sessions with her and that really got me back on track. Um, so I worked out my goals earlier in January. Um, and my plans for 2020. And now I have a much clearer strategy for diving to Malaysia. I wouldn't say it was crystal clear for the whole year, but I definitely know where I'm heading and what I'm trying to achieve. I'm just also open to working out the details as I get to know my audience better. And all of this makes me feel a lot better. I'm much more keen to work. I know what I'm trying to do. Um, my big goal for this year is what I'm calling work freedom, which is basically working as little as I feel like and choosing what I work on. So really what I'm just trying to do is get myself out of the trenches, you know, get myself out of the weeds, stop doing all the day-to-day -day little bits of crap that I do and only work on bigger picture stuff or things like this live where I enjoy it and, you know, it really has to be me and, you know, I enjoy it basically. <laughs> when I enjoy something and someone else can do it, why am I still doing it is kind of what I'm trying to think through. Um, you know, I really need to be working on those bigger things. If I really want to have some amazing growth and go in all the directions I want to go in, then I need to just dedicate my time to that. And that'll also remove a lot of pressure, you know, because if I'm only working on those big picture things, if I don't work for a few weeks, well, that might be a little bit longer till I get to doing those big picture things, but I don't need them to live or for my business to go well. So it'll make it much easier for me to relax, I feel. So this is exciting and it's exhilarating me and I've worked so little in comparison to normal in the last two months that it really feels great. You know, I took most of the time off in the summer holidays. That was like nice. It was also nice when I got to work. I do still love my work. Um, but not doing it as often, it's, you know, I do find my work can be like an addiction, you know, and it's like at least the less I do it, the less I feel that addiction and that pull and the more I can kind of just relax and enjoy life. So I'm enjoying that. Um, I've also, you know, had to hire people and train them. So that's really taken most of my time and I'm still doing that. I'm documenting processes, um, but it is exciting to think, you know, give it another month and hopefully that's all just sort of like buckled down and I won't have to worry about that so much anymore. So for diving to Malaysia to get back, so all that sort of big picture across my businesses, um, but for my Malaysia site, uh, more specifically, you know, I came up with a budget for writing work and I decided to hire an editor role. So my new editor started last week. It's Melissa Kiley. She's in this group. Uh, she was previously doing my writing work. Um, she still is doing some writing work, but she is also going to be my editor. So the process I described earlier for new articles is still the same. You know, like I come up with the main keyword, that part I still do, but then all the rest where it was me now becomes Melissa, except for 
the exception being content that we're writing about experiences I will have on my research trip. I'll be a bit more involved on those articles for obvious reasons, but otherwise I'm just trying to remove myself. Because at the end of the day, my big goal for Dive in Malaysia, even when I started it, you know, 15 and a half months ago, was that it's like my exit strategy. It's going to be my big business going forward. I always want to build it so that I can be removed and then it can run without me. So these are good steps in that direction, I think. Um, I've also hired NUVA to help as my beloved current one is about to take four months maternity leave. She starts after tomorrow. So um, I'm really going to miss her, but I'm excited about this new person. Hopefully that works out. Um, you know, I've always invested a fair bit into my business, but I've realized it really is time for more and that there'll be never a better time than right now, you know, where my husband is working as well and we don't actually even need my income to live. And as much as, <clears throat> you know, I love my business, I still want to help make my income grow and I want my husband to quit again soon, hopefully. Um, you know, this is the, the best time for me to be able to invest into it. Now, the editor that I've hired and other people I've talked about will work on other sites too, but mostly it'll be on my Malaysia site. Um, like I said, I'll only write directly about experience that I'll have visiting Malaysia in 2020. Um, and this will really free up my time for bigger goals for the site, like direct relationships with relevant brands, creating digital products. And I just have so many other big ideas, even things like possibly starting my own on the ground Malaysian travel company. So in January, I did come up with a plan to get the site to 10,000 per month revenue in the next year. It feels like a bit of a stretch goal because um, I'm taking more of a long-term view of this site. It's not like the way I normally do it. Um, so, you know, it, it, I'm happy to be patient, although, um, you know, 10,000 in revenue would be nice and I feel like these achievable. Um, I also reached out to Click and made a sponsored travel arrangement. Um, now, usually I hate sponsored travel and I did it as little as I could in the past. Um, and this definitely is not part of my plan on going, basically because I don't think it's a good use of my time. Um, but I do think it's a good way to build on, work on building a more solid relationship with, with select partners and Click I see as a big one in our future. So whatever I can do to help grow that partnership at the moment is a win to me. I also got some snazzy business cards just for Dive in Malaysia. You know, I already have ones for DNW, but I want ones just for my Malaysia site um, already for ITB. Um, I can see a message from Mario. I'll just say, hi, I'm glad you rushed in. Um, seems like there's a few people watching. Remember, you can always ask questions. Um, so that was December. I've been talking about January as well. Um, something else happened in January, which was my Facebook group for my Malaysia site, finally started taking off. Now, it's still just under 500 members, um, but it's gone up a fair bit in January. It feels like it's finally doing something, you know. I've stopped feeling like I'm talking to myself. Um, there is new sign-ups every day, and I hope to hit 500 probably in about the next week because it's going up a lot quicker now. It's on like 468, I think, this morning. Um, I do look forward to how this grows in the next six months, especially as it's still not at the level where Facebook should start advertising it for free. Um, so um, when that ha starts happening, that's when it should really start growing. So I'm excited by that. I, I also continue to plan to work less. So it's not just about changing what I do, but I'm like finally seeing the light at the tunnel that one day my three-year-old will stop being three and it seems like he's been three forever, to be honest. Um, and then he will go to school, you know, it's still two years away, but I just know that this is the time I should be taking advantage. I love the two days a week at, at the moment I have where he's not at childcare and my other kids are at school and I'm hoping to grow that to three days. So he'll just do two days childcare. Um, and I just want to continue to be more relaxed about life like I have more recently, you know, it's really suiting me. Um, it's a new feeling for me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I built this business for a better lifestyle. I feel like that's how I can have one. So as for income, in December, uh, this was just over $1,000, so it was really great to get your full figures for the first time. Everything was up and there was similar breakups um, than what there was before. In January, it slipped down a bit to $920, although my traffic is still going up. Um, so in January, the page views were 39,000, um, so a lot better than 25,000 in October. That's gone up very nicely. Um, and yeah, the income obviously went up too. You know, it was $500 in September and October to one, over 1,000 in December, over 900 in January. Um, of course, these are revenue figures. So, um, and I'm now investing more than this into growing the business. Um, but of course, if I was willing to work on it, if you were doing this yourself, this is still really just part-time work that I'm paying for. Um, you could definitely do that and you would be making that money. 
but you know to even get it to this point it was really primarily only my own team and maybe on average one day a fortnight over a year so to get to a thousand dollars with one day a fortnight over a year especially while I was taking a long-term view and not everything I've done has been about monetization uh, is not too bad, I don't think. But yeah, I mean, I have done better on other sites because I've been more focused on that monetization. So that's basically what I did from months 12 to where I am now at about 15 and a half months. I've got some big moves planned, but otherwise I added very little content uh, during this period, apart from right at the beginning when I was finishing off the trip stuff. Um, and instead, I got really into planning and hiring mode. But yeah, I mean, I'm hoping, I mean, even our content plan, it's about four articles a month, except for the end of March, the start of April, I go to Malaysia again for a week, and then there'll be a whole big content explosion after that. Um, but, you know, it's more or slow and steady. So if you've got any questions, this is the time to add them. I've got some already um, from the group, but if you're here live, I'll prioritize you, like, let me know. Um, I also want to remind you again that Build Blog Freedom Fast Track does have that course specifically on starting a second site if you want to do something similar to this, and then you can do the 10-week program to work you through exactly growing it using all my SEO and affiliate marketing strategies. And like I already said, from now on, all my updates will cover exactly what's happening right now and will be up to date just like this one. And I really can't wait to share all the progress I make this year as I think it'll be an epic one for this site. And I mean, I'm excited myself. I wish I could skip forward a year and see what I'm saying. So Leslie asks, what kind of articles are performing the best for you now? Uh, it's a whole mixture. Um, some of my transfer ones do well, like how to get between places, some of my guides. Um, there's not really a pattern. I'm hoping as, um, because I my trip in October was to the east coast of Malaysia and that's very seasonal for that because uh, it really shuts down at this time of year. But that opens up again next month and all those rankings, I can see my rankings for those have got quite good over the time it's been sitting there the last four months. So I'm hoping that they will all like start being my top ones very soon. Um, but yeah, what about performing best in terms of revenue? Um, that's a good question. I could go in a Zoic and have a look. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but that's what's good about a Zoic too. It shows you, you can see exactly what articles are earning what money. Um, I have some theme park ones that do well with Kluke, a SIM card one that does well with Kluke. Um, the hotel bookings tend to be ones, um, especially around one destination I read about, Port Dixon, um, because I wrote a whole lot about Port Dixon, so I have a lot of hotel articles for that. Um, so yeah, I mean, the hotel bookings tend to come from most hotel articles like reviews or best hotels in Port Dixon, for example. Um, theme park reviews, you know, are good for selling theme park tickets, uh, you know, an article about getting a SIM card for Malaysia that does well, although those commissions are like in this, you know, are just cents because the SIM cards are really cheap. But what works well with that is sometimes people buy uh, other things while they're on click and then I get the commission for that as well. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, the transport ones too, like how to get, like I think a popular one is how to get from Kuala Lumpur to Bahinian Islands. So again, one that should go even better now that Bahinian Islands will be open for business again soon. Um, that definitely leads to, to bookings. Um, I do, uh, the East Coast Islands are good for that because there's a lot of ferries. So people seem more likely to book the ferries. But again, this is Malaysia. So all these things are pretty cheap. So it is a bit of a, um, you know, it adds up if you get a lot of them, but otherwise they're really just cents um, that I'm earning from them. Uh, that's why I definitely know I need to work on sponsorship and my own digital product and, and getting really smart with how I go about things. Um, because just getting commissions from an area where most things are very cheap, you know, like I just need a ton of traffic to ever get that to the to the um, revenue levels that I'm looking for. Ellie, what's the biggest learning been since starting the site? Um, that's a great question. Hmm, I feel like I need to think about that. <laughs> I, I learned that I like I can learn I learned some personal things, which is I love writing about travel. You know, I got really sick of it with my old blog. That's why I sold it. And definitely, I've learned what's good for me, which is just like writing about travel, but just one destination. So most of my trips are still just fun and only summer work. That definitely works for me. Um, but from an SEO perspective, I mean, I tried doing. Uh, like what I was calling a content blitz because I've had a lot of people say you don't need links just write a whole lot on a small area and it'll rank by itself the areas where I did that I wouldn't say that they work better than areas where I just write one or two articles so I can't say that worked for me um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I do just, I do think writing about a smaller niche, like one country is very good. It definitely helps with the SEO aspect. It helps, I think, already for me being an authority. I love having the Facebook group. But yeah, I'm not, I'm, I just can't think of my biggest learning. I'll think about it. <laughs> um, can't see any more questions live, but if you're listening, please ask them. I'll answer the ones that were put in the group earlier. So you, Katie asked, what new sites should focus on to gain traction as blogging is evolving? Um, I think I was actually right before this practicing my TVX talk already because um, I've just got all the slides made for me and I just want to go through it make sure it was right. Um, and I was just doing the one on EAT right before this actually. So that's expertise, authoritativeness and trust. And I really think that's what you want to think about as a new site owner. Um, it's definitely what I think about now when I decide for a new site to build and it's changed sort of how I pick my niches now for new sites. You know, what can you be an expert authority in? I think that's really important and I think that's where having a niche that's not too broad is helpful because you just need to think, how do I show that I'm an expert and authority in whatever it is I'm writing about? And if you say in travel, if you're writing about the whole world, like how do you really do that? You know, so I just think if you really think about those things and establishing yourself as an expert and authority from the beginning, um, that can really help you. And that's where I talk about how I've not just gone for things that earn money with his side and really thinking more long-term, that's kind of the types of things that I think about and try to do that. Arnett, will you take on advertising on the site for businesses on the ground in Malaysia? Yeah, I imagine I will, Annette. I'm just still trying to sort that stuff out. Next week, I'm really, I'm just gonna focus all my time and trying to work this stuff out and preparing for ITB and thinking about what I wanna achieve and how I wanna work with people, but I do see that as being part of it. Um, okay, what are the other questions I had written down? Um, Darlene asked how to hire writers, which is a great question. As I said, it took me a couple of weeks to really get the right people. Um, I've heard in the past is I talk to people who've done my courses because like Melissa, um, because I know they know my strategies already. I know they know how to write the way I like and to, to use SEO and keywords the way I like. So I do like to hire people who've done my courses because it's like I got them trained for free. In fact, they even paid me to train in a way. Um, but because I needed more and I wanted the ones that I've hired that way or that I know are up for work, the problem is that there's more structure around it than what I really want. I want to just say I want an article and it's kind of just written in a couple of days and it's all just more streamlined. Um, and that's where I've really been loving Textbroker. I've been using textbroker.com. It took two weeks of mucking around to find writers I'm really happy with working with. But um, And it's and I wouldn't say it was cheap at all. I'm paying about 12 US cents a word or something. Um, you know, which is a fair bit because a lot of these articles are already researched, you know, like they're just, they're really just rewriting the notes my VA makes with some keywords in it. So they can write them really quick actually. Um, but I do like text broker for that. But if you're going to do that, you do have to commit time. You know, I went and searched for people. I didn't put up job ads. I searched for people who had good rankings and stuff. And then I like wrote to them and see if they would do a test article. Most people don't even reply to you, you know, and then some who did the test, I don't know, some were painful, some were great. Eventually I found some people I can work with more long-term and that's nice and easy. Um, I also tried out Matt and I've forgotten his last name and the name of his service, but I can find it out, um, who is in the D&W group as well. And he has a great writing service and I thought that was good as well. Um, and I would use that over text broker in a way, except for, because it's cheaper. Um, but that also just had a little bit more it's not much rigmarole around it, but it still just had a bit more. Whereas text broker, I just log in whenever I want and it just felt really easy. I could communicate directly with the writers. Whereas with Matt's service, you had to use more, um, they had like a way of doing things. Whereas it's like in text broker, I can do things the way I want to do it a bit more easily. Um, but I mean, I would still recommend that service, especially if you're just getting used to working with writers because um, I think the, the way to make it successful with working with writers is to be really clear on what you want, give really clear instructions and all of that and have a good process around it. So the good thing is if you use Matt service is that you're kind of given that process and they'll also do more of the keyword stuff for you. They'll give you photos and all of that um, so that I can see many benefits to that. It's just for me personally, um, I'll just want to use my own process. <laughs> um, but that is a great way to get started. Well, let me just see if there's any more live questions. Alexandra's asking my plans in terms of sponsorship. I really don't know at this stage, that's next week's job. <laughs> and I've got to get my head around that because it's not something I really cared about in the past. It's like, it is a new area for me. So if anyone want to give me any tips, I'm open to them. Mario, how much content do you usually have staged at a time? 
I don't know what you mean by that. So the plan is at the moment like four odd pieces a month going on. I can see how much is on there at the moment. It would It's over 100 now. It is a fair bit of content. Um, but it does tend to be in spurts. You know, like when I did that trip, I like had like 30 pieces or something from that trip. And then we didn't really do anything. I had like two articles last month. I have some articles that don't need so much content and they're more just like lists, like literally lists. And um, I can get my VA to make those. So that's like nice and easy. Um, so we've got 138 published on the site at the moment. I can definitely drop a link to Matt Service for people. Um, so yeah, I do want to be clear. I do recommend it. I did use it. And I think it's great if you don't already have a clear process that you want to follow. Um, but in saying that, they are flexible to do stuff too. It's just I already had text broker working. So it was like, oh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I'll just stick with what's working. Um, okay, I had another question from earlier. Clara, uh, how do you how do you guest post as an authority on a topic without duplicating content with other sites you guest post on and your own site? Um, like we answered in the thread already, you know, you can keep a list of post ideas. I keep a whole lot of keywords that I think are pretty good um, that are relevant. And then when I look to guest post for someone else, I obviously want one that will be really relevant to their site. And it's like, if it's more relevant to their site than mine, that's really good or they're more competitive. Um, like this is exactly what I did. So say two I did recently. I did one for Planet D, uh, if you've heard of them. Um, so they're a really big site. They've got a really great authority. Um, so I'd already written about things to do in Penang, but I did mine about what, I think my main keyword saying like what to do in Penang in three days, saying like that, right? Because things to do in Penang was too competitive. But for their site, um, they have a good chance to rank for things to do in Penang. So I did that for them. So there's like slightly different angles, if you know what I mean. Or for why travel blog, because they have more of a family focus. Um, I'd already done, a, I think it was places to visit in Malaysia on my site. So I did places to visit in Malaysia for family for their site. And actually I looked at it just before I, I came on this when I saw your question to get it right. Um, and it was ranking number one. So yeah, I did the right one. Um, you know, because it's like both those articles, maybe one day I would want to write them for my site, but I wouldn't now. I feel like that's a little bit rude. Um, but, you know, I'm happy to give them away because there's so many different, there's just so many keywords on Malaysia, right? It's really not hard to find something that's closely related and can make sense for them and is okay that I'm happy to give up having on my own site. And I think if you're writing for a niche where you can't come up with tons of article ideas, I would sort of question why you're in the niche um, unless you're happy to just build a small micro site. And then I would go a bit sideways to work out guest posting topics. Um, so I don't see any other questions. Hopefully Facebook isn't hiding them from me. Of course, you can always ask any time in the DNW group. Um, so I'm not sure when I'll do the next case study. It's like I've got to find something to say. Uh, hopefully after next month in ITV Berlin, I'll have heaps to say and uh, we can do another one. Um, but until then, feel free to ask any questions. Bye.